Hey, this is Dr. K from my medical school. Today we're going to start off our series on heart murmurs by talking about normal heart sounds. Make sure to check out our other informative videos at our YouTube channel, iMedical School, and our website, iMedicalSchool.org. Let's begin this series of heart murmurs by first addressing normal heart sounds. Ever since we were little, we have been familiar with the characteristic lub-dub sound the heart makes. These heart sounds represent the normal physiology of the heart. When the heart malfunctions, the heart creates abnormal sounds called murmurs. Before we can understand what is abnormal, we need to understand what is normal and how anatomy plays a role. Let's briefly begin by understanding cardiac anatomy. The inferior vena cava and superior vena cava bring deoxygenated blood into the right atrium. The right atrium contracts and pushes its blood past the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. The right ventricle pushes blood past the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery, which courses to the lungs. Once the deoxygenated blood is oxygenated in the lungs, it comes via the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. The left atrium pushes its blood past the mitral valve into the left ventricle. The left ventricle pushes blood past the aortic valve into the ascending aorta, where the oxygenated blood is distributed throughout the body via the arterial system. Now, we talked about this sequence as if they are linear events that occur one after another. But realize several of these events are happening at the same time at any given moment. In fact, both atria contract nearly simultaneously, pushing blood into their respective ventricles. And then both ventricles contract, pushing blood into their respective arteries. The movement of blood past the valves and into the various chambers of the heart is responsible for the heart sounds we hear. The characteristic lub-dub that we hear are two separate heart sounds. The first heart sound is called S1, and the second heart sound is called S2. We can hear them here. S1 is actually composed of two separate heart sounds that overlap. S1 is created by the closure of the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve one after the other. The best way to differentiate between S1 and S2 is to feel for a patient's carotid pulse while you listen to their heart sounds. S1 will be heard nearly simultaneously with the carotid pulse. Keep in mind that S1 consists of two heart sounds. Occasionally, if you listen closely, you'll be able to perceive a natural split in S1. The difference between these heart sounds is a fourth of a second, so it is very subtle. If you listen over the left lower sternal border, you'll be able to hear the mitral valve component of S1 the loudest. On the other hand, the tricuspid portion is best heard in the left third and fourth intercostal space as a very soft beat. Now let's talk about S2. S2, or the second heart sound, is created by the closure and flow of blood past the aortic and pulmonary valves. Just as with S1, S2 has two components the closure of the aortic valve, and the closure of the pulmonic valve. Unlike S1, the splitting of the components of S2 is more prominent and more easily heard. S2 is split into A2, representing the aortic valve component, and P2, representing the pulmonic valve component. Widening and narrowing of the normal split of S2 helps us diagnose physiologic and anatomical abnormalities of the heart. A2 precedes P2. A2 is more prominent over the apex of the heart, but can be heard at the left sternal border, especially at the second intercostal space. The beat that quickly follows A2 is P2, and it can also be best appreciated at the left sternal border. So how does recognizing normal heart sounds help us appreciate abnormal heart sounds? Well, when I was learning physical diagnosis, I had trouble grasping murmurs until I heard some simple advice. Always first listen for and identify S1 and S2. Once they are identified, listen between these heart sounds. If you hear other heart sounds, then there is a murmur present. Let's try some examples. I will play a couple clips, listen to them, and then see if you can tell if the samples are normal heart sounds or if a murmur is present. Place your answers in the comment section below. Here is example one. Here is example two.
Here is example three. Place your answer in the comment section where you think these examples are normal heart sounds or if a murmur is present. Well, that was a brief review of normal heart sounds. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give this video a like. Share this video with your friends and classmates. Place your answers and questions in the comment section below. And most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from iMedical School, and I'll see you next time.